Well, hello everybody. I'm gonna show you today how to tie multiple feeder rigs. There's gonna be about 10 in total. I'm gonna to show you all the rigs I use, other alternatives and, and a few little tips and tricks to help you get a bit more out of your feeder rigs. Whether it's a cage feeder, a block end feeder, um, open end feeder, method feeder, hybrid style feeder, or even a bomb, I'm gonna show you the rigs that will hopefully help you catch more fish. So without further ado, Let's slide all these out of the way and get cracking. Now, commercial fishers seem to dominate everything these days and by far the most popular feeder has to be a method style feeder or an open style feeder or hybrid style feeder, but they're generally the same sort of thing and they are set up in exactly the same way. Most venues, well, all venues allow an inline running system. So we're gonna start off with an inline feeder. Generally, you have some sort of bead at the end that your hook length attaches to, and then the feeder is free running on the line. So uh, I'm gonna show you a very simple way of doing it, and then I'll show you the way I prefer to do it. So let's get a length of line. I've got some nice black line there, hopefully you can see that. And uh, yeah, inline feeder, very, very simple. Quite a lot of them come with a, a top sleeve, not all, but some do. So I generally take that off. And so if you imagine, this side is going to the reel, or yeah, to, to your reel or the end of the rod. So we just need to thread on the feeder, put that tail rubber on first. Sometimes I've got a little tiny hole to find. Yeah, can't find the hole. There we are. So we got we thread on the tail rubber first, and then we'll thread on our feeder. Very, very simple. And then pop the tail rubber on so we don't uh, forget about it. Okay. And then obviously what we need now is a swivel or a bead or something on the end there to attach our hook length to. So generally a lot of these feeders come with a hook length attachment now or some sort of quick change bead. We can buy them separately, come in various sort of guises. You can use all sorts of things. You can even just use a swivel. You know, you could use any any old sort of thing, but these matrix ones, and most most shop bought feeders come with some sort of a method feeder bead now with the inline variety. And they're generally in two parts, so we'll take the two parts away. Oop, there we are. And we'll slide that first bit on. I'll grab the bit of line. Let's have a look. So we'll slide that on. And then we slide our, what should we call this bit? The clasp bit. Sometimes there's a tiny little hole. Yeah, I got it first time. Well, that's a first. So there we are. That's our two parts. And then to secure that knot, a lot of people will tie like a half blood knot or something like that. But I think it's better to tie it in a little loop. I think a loop is a better knot. Um, you could just go around with a, a double overhand knot and go through itself twice. So that's a double overhand knot. Hopefully you've got that and then pull that tight. And then that's an option. Um, I think a better knot than that is um, a figure of eight knot. So we'll undo that and we'll just tie a very quick figure of eight knot. So there we are, we've doubled up the line make a bit more of a tag there. So we've doubled up the line. I'm gonna create a loop like so. I'll show you that again, it wasn't very good, was it? I'm gonna double up the line and turn it around and you're creating a, a big loop there. Put your finger in, twist it round, grab the bead, pull it through, and then you've got a figure of eight there. Moisten and pull it tight. Now obviously I could bring that loop much further down there if I need to. I could, I could make the loop, the knot, like, you know, right up to the, the bead if I need to, or have it right up there. It's not, it doesn't really matter too much. This is a nice doubled up bit of line anyway, so it's nice and strong. Let's just trim this. But a figure of eight knot is ultra strong anyway, stronger than a double overhand or treble overhand knot because it doesn't constrict as much. And then we can slide this collar down. That'll come over the, over the knot, no problem. 
So our hook length can go in that little clasp there. And then we've got a loop with a knot there. Now, a lot of people think, well, that doesn't look right. But once your feed is pulled down, the knot's all hidden. It's gone. It's hidden. It's, it's inside the feeder. So, uh, so that's a nice, simple way of attaching a quick change bead, um, method feeder bead or whatever, to the main line. And then to put the hook length on, obviously, we, we take that bit off. I've got a little short length here. And we can attach it. And we can attach it like so. There we are. And put the collar down. There we are. So there's our hook length all attached, sliding down, and that's our inline feeder. So it's completely free running, and the knot is hidden by the feeder. So, but as I say, you can bring that knot right down there as well. It's not a problem, but as long as it's in within the feeder, it doesn't matter too much where that knot is really. So there we are. That's the basic one. <laughs> Let's try and take it a step further, and this is the way I prefer to do it where it's allowed. Right, this is the way I prefer to fish an inline method feeder. Um, there's a very, very handful of venues, I can think of like, like Lindome Lakes, somewhere where you're not allowed a knot above the feeder of any description. So um, for those sort of venues, um, the, the first way I showed you is, is, is the way to go. But on 95% of venues I fish, um, you're allowed a knot above the feeder. And at the end of the day, it's an inline feeder anyway, so it can slide over that knot, so it's a nice safe setup. Um, I'll show you what I do on those venues that are inline feeder only, um, and where there's no sort of strictness about what goes on above here. Right then, so that's our two part bead, shall we say. Let's push this up out the way, so we've just got this bit now. Now what I like to do is a twizzle boom. So, and to make a twizzle, you basically hold both ends and you spin one end. So I, this, this finger here is spinning, this one's staying still. And um, can you see how it's trying to twizzle? Easier said than done. Yeah, but actually the, the bead itself isn't in that twizzle at the moment, that's not a problem. So I can just grab the two bits together, pull it down, and there it is, it's in the twizzle now, okay? So uh, and I'm gonna continue to spin, and I'm gonna continue to spin. And what you're doing, you're creating a boom. Sometimes it gets a bit messy, but there you are. And all we've done is doubled up the line. You can see that? We've doubled up the line and we've created a twizzled boom. Sometimes it'll spin over itself and do all sorts of things, especially uh, because I've got a camera on myself. But there you are, a nice twizzle boom. And all you want to do now, I can just grab it there. Let's just grab that section now there. Hopefully you can see that. So we twizzled up this bit of line all the way to that bead. And I'm going to pinch that to stop the twizzle undoing itself. And once again, um, a figure of eight loop is, is okay. So we can use a figure of eight. And then we just pull that, can you see that figure right there? Moisten and pull tight. So there we are. We've now got a twizzled length of line. I'm just gonna trim the end. You don't have to trim these too tight. Don't trim them too tight. There's no advantage to trim them tight. Leave quite a long tag. That way the, the fish can't pull it undone. It's, it doesn't matter about how neat that is there. Leaving a long enough tag stops that um, com potentially coming undone under pressure. So don't feel you have to trim your knots really, really tight. It's not a, it's not a hook knot, it's just an, a rig knot. So don't be scared to leave them a bit of a tag because I don't want that coming undone under pressure. So there we are. And there we are, we've got a nice twizzle boom now. Now I can slide this collar over, that will easily go over there. Imagine our hook length is going to go on that bead. And then we're going to slide our feeder. Sometimes it just, that little, um, if that hole's not quite big enough, there we are, that's easy enough. So there we are. We've still got 
our free running feeder. And by doubling up, making this twizzled boom, we're, we're creating several advantages, I think. So firstly, we've got a doubled up section of line, so it's extra strong. That, that can make a lot of difference, especially with big carp, for instance, and they're rubbing along the sides or the scales or the dorsal fin. Where it's doubled up is gonna be stronger, it's twice as strong, so, um, so that's one reason. Also, once you've netted a fish um, and it's in your landing net, this doubled up section of line is gonna be the bit that's gonna go over the rim of the landing net. Again, that's a, that's a key weak area so you're strengthening your rig, you're strengthening your rig and setup. And also, this little knock can sometimes just create a little bit of resistance and then help set the hook. But look, you can see the whole knot will pull through. So, so it's a nice little, um, nice little setup. And that doubled up bit, I will sometimes make a foot long. So right up to here. Um, but for the purpose of this video, I've just shown you a short doubled up section. It also means the knot isn't down here where your hook length bead is. It's up here out the way. That's the only knot in the rig. It's up there out the way. Not, not at the business end where your hook and everything is and where it's all getting trapped and everything, where the most pressure on your rig can be. So, uh, so that's a real nice free running setup that I use a lot, a twizzled boom. And it's a great way of reinforcing the rig in a key area where you get the most abuse. So there we are, an inline feeder with a twizzle boom for extra strength and security. I use this rig a hell of a lot. Right then, we have two styles of method feeder here. We've got an inline version and an elasticated version. I'll show you those there. Very, very similar looking. Now, um, the inline version is commonly used everywhere. It's quite a Midlandsy thing, but uh, elasticated feeders, particularly in the Midlands, are really, really popular. And you've got this elasticated setup. Um, there's other options like the X-Safe system and stuff like that as well. So, but they come with an elasticated stem. Um, venues like Makins, Barston Lakes, uh, Meadowlands, Packington, um, Boddington Reservoir, they all allow an elasticated feeder. And um, where allowed, I do think that elasticated device really does help um, help you land more fish. So to uh, attach that to the line, you just use a swivel. So I've got a couple of varieties here. This is this is the most common swivel used. If I can grab it, it's got almost like a diamond end. I don't know if you can see that, but I actually prefer these rounder swivels. Um, the clasp style there is less likely to open up under pressure. So I prefer the round style, but both styles are, are perfectly good really. To um, attach it to the line, again, very, very simple. Let's get a length of line. Give it a snip. Right. You could tie various sorts of loop knots. Uh, a loop knot's very, very good. So we could tie it in um, a figure of eight loop again. So by put your finger in, twizzle, finger in, grab it, there's your figure of eight. Okay, so that's a perfectly good way of doing it. Moisten, pull it tight. Now, unlike the um, inline version, this bit of the loop is exposed. So I prefer to hide that a little bit. Um, and I prefer a Palomar knot for this. It was actually Andy Finley who uh, convinced me to use a Palomar. I don't know if he still uses a Palomar knot, but uh, I went out with Andy Finley one day doing some filming and he, he showed me a Palomar knot. And ever since then, I, I've been using that. And because I do a lot of law fishing as well, a Palomar knot is really, really useful for um, any sort of law fishing. So, um, and tying anything to a swivel or a big a big hook or something like that. So let's show you a Palomar knot. To get a Palomar knot, you basically got to put a loop through the swivel. So if you double this over, yeah, so we've doubled it up, you need to leave quite a long tag there. And this, this bit here, has got to go through the eye of the swivel. So um, let's see if I can get it through. There we are, we've gone through with our loop. So um, that's the first part of tying a Palomar. So you've basically got a doubled up length of line going 
through the swivel. And then to tie a Palomar, just make sure you've got plenty of tag end here. Make sure there's plenty there. So we'll pull a little bit more through. There we are. Right, and I'm gonna double, double it up like that. Hopefully you can see that. Go through itself. There. So it looks like this. Hopefully you can see that. And then we want that to go through there. So just grab that. It's got a few prongs, it sometimes catches a little bit. There we are. And that is, we've created a, a figure of eight loop there. And if we just pull it down and moisten it, sometimes you've just got to work it right on the end of the the swivel just to make sure it's nice and tight. There we are, a lovely, lovely compact knot. It's still got that important figure of eight design, so it doesn't constrict on itself too much. And we'll just trim that. Again, I don't mind a little bit of a tag. I think it's important to leave a bit of a tag. And there we are. We've attached our swivel with a Palomar knot. And that is my preferred knot for tying anything to a swivel or an eyed hook when I'm not using a, a knotless knot system. Okay? But again, I like to use a twizzle boom if I can. So I'll show you it again, um, but using a twizzle boom instead of a Palomar. Right then, so yeah, same again, same process for twizzling, but I'll show you a little trick for twizzling now. And basically I'm gonna rotate one finger and we're gonna create our boom. So twizzle, twizzle, twizzle. It's not, to, it's not to, it's actually working pretty well like that. But some people, including myself, sometimes struggle to make that little twizzle. It gets a little bit fiddly. The, what you need is a bit of a weight on this end. That's, that's, that, as soon as you put a bit of a weight on this end, it makes that twizzle boom so much easier to tie. So I'm gonna open that swivel up. I'm gonna put a bomb on a plummet or anything like that can work you want you don't want it you want it compact because you want it to be able to go through itself so uh you don't want a big long cumbersome thing just something nice and dense and heavy like a bomb or a plummet so we'll pop that in and as soon as you've got that bit of weight on the line it makes the whole process of twizzling so much easier look I'm twizzling and twizzling and twizzling. So I'm working my way up there and I can make that twizzle as much as I want. And because you've got a weight, you get a tighter twizzle as well. So there we are. We've probably got now a good eight inch twizzle from the knot. And because of that weight, it just makes it easier to tie that twizzle without this mess and misbehaving and everything. So, and another little tip, if your twizzle isn't very tight, <laughs> if you just, undo it and then let it twizzle itself back up again. Whoop, it tightens up again. So you can actually get a tighter twizzle just by undoing the twizzle and then and then letting it go back twizzling itself up again. You get a much, much tighter twizzle. So that's a little trick as well. And then obviously you get a lovely, lovely straight bit of doubled up line. So again, I originally showed you um, a figure of eight knot for this, but I actually don't mind because I just don't think this knot ever breaks because it's normally eight, 10 pound line, something like that. I have got no problem going through itself three times. So it's a, a, a triple overhand loop. Moisten that again. There you are. You've got a triple overhand loop there. Um, a triple, a triple overhand knot, should I say. And it's all nice and secure. Let's trim that off. Again, do not trim it too tight. There's no advantage to it. And there we are. That's all, that's all lovely and neat. We'll take this off. We'll take that bomb off now. Attach our elasticated method feeder. So that's our elasticated feeder. There's no other knot down here. The only knot is up there, out the way. 
And then you've got this double dot length of line that's more abrasion resistant for rubbing over a landing net or um, any potential area where your main line can get damaged or whatever. So there we are. We've doubled up the length of line above our swivel with our elasticated feeder set up on. So there you are. But check your fishery rules. Check your allowed and elasticated feeder. Um, some venues insist on like an XA system or, or something like that instead as well. So, but that is a very, very popular arrangement, particularly in the Midlands area. And if you're not allowed that, use the inline feeder cell. All right then, let's move on to traditional open end cage and block end feeders. Now your standard free running feeder usually runs down to some sort of stop and then after that you'll have a loop or attachment where you can put your hook length on and off. Certainly in general match fishing situations it's very very rare to fish direct from the main line to the hook. So we always have a hook length um, and, that, and usually you run your feeder down to a bead or a stop and then you attach the hook length to there. So there are these two part systems, they're not too bad. And this ends, works like a buffer for your feeder to, to butt up against, like that. So, um, so that's an option. Um, I prefer this style of um, a swivel and um, a bead. So that swivel goes into that bead. But actually, a better system, do away with the swivel, and then you can actually pop um, a quick chain swivel into the bead. Or what I prefer, um, a hook link swivel. I don't know what we call these. Um, loads of companies now produce them. It's a quick change hook link bead with a clasp there that you can open and close and put your hook link on the end. So, but that goes together really, really well with these sorts of beads. You just tuck in there nice and easily. So that's, that's a really nice way of attaching your hook length and you've got a little bit of a shocker bead for your feeder to butt up to. I'll show you what I do with that. Firstly, our feeder is going to be attached to a quick change facility. Never ever fish a feeder without a quick change facility. So there we are, that's going to run on the line. So we'll thread that up the line first. Move these scissors out of the way. Yeah, so let's thread that up the line. So that feed is going to be up there out the way now. Forget about that. And then I'm going to use this bead facility. Thread the bead on first. It's generally got a, a small hole at one end and a much larger hole at the other. So you want the small hole going up towards the feeder. And then I'm going to put on this uh, quick change. Um, hook length swivel, shall we call it, quick change swivel. And again, I'm going to use a Palomar. So I show you by threading a loop through, but another way of doubling that bit is to go through once and then just go back through the eye and then just grab it. So there we've got, we've got a doubled up bit of line going through the eye of the swivel. And to do our Palomar, go over itself again. Go through, like so, yeah, and then grab the swivel or the uh, hook length, I don't know what to call these things, uh, <laughs> grab your chosen device through, you've created the, the figure of eight, moisten and pull down tight. Make sure it's all nice and snug and it's all collected in the right place. If you don't pull it down properly, sometimes the, the loop of line will be the other side of this of this uh, ring. So it's all nice and compact there. All to pull down tight. We just chop our tag end off. Have some line on the floor after this. And um, yeah, and then we can slide our our bead down to that. Just come off the line because I didn't have a long enough length of line. There we are. So there's our bead and that, hopefully you can see that, that will just butt into there 
And there we are, that's our buffer bead. And we can attach our hook link to there. Let's just do that quickly with a, a very short hook link, which I've got here. That goes on and that collar goes over the top. Just make sure it's properly over. So there's our hook, a very short hook length in this instance. <laughs> a very sharp one as well, because my finger's hurting. And then the feeder, let's thread this back on. And then the feeder will butt up to that nice and, so you've got a buffer bead there, free running. So there we are, nice free running setup, buffering up against that bead, and we can still change our hook length nice and quickly there if we need to as well. So it's a great setup, but my issue with that is the feeder can interact with that hook length too much. I don't want my hook length being able to wrap around any of this or down here. I want my hook length to start further away than the length of the feeder. I want it to start down here somewhere. So, um, in this next bit, I'll show you how I overcome that. So there is our standard free running feeder, but buffering up to a bead, which is okay, but my issue is it can tangle up with the hook length here quite easily. So I want my main line to continue longer than the length of the feeder hangs. So to do that, let's do away with all of this. That's our feeder there, we'll pop that out the way. Actually, no, we won't. We'll slide it up the line. And then we'll pop it out of the way. So there we are, feeders out of the way. Right then, it's our old friend, the Twizzle Loop again. <laughs> Make sure you um, get a decent length of line. Give, give yourself a good 10 inches to a foot to play with. Double it over. Okay, so you've got a nice big long loop there. Okay, and I'm pinching it here. So there we are, nice big long loop. So I've worked my fingers down to the end of this long loop, okay? And I like to tie a little loop in the end. You could um, quite easily use a, hook, a quick change hook length swivel or something like that. I actually don't like a swivel down there. I, I'd rather just cut off a hook length and put a new one on, but that a lot of people do use a quick change hook length swivel or something like that, but I just prefer to loop to loop it. So I'm gonna double it over use the old loop tire. I've done a video called Loop Tricks. Um, it's definitely worth a watch if you haven't seen it already. So anyway, we're gonna just go in there, turn it once, pop it in the loop, pull it down, take it out, and then it's tied a nice figure of eight loop knot. If you haven't caught that, try my Loop Tricks video. So we'll pull that tight, and there we are. But I'm not gonna chop my tag end. I'm gonna twizzle it. So, You've got a, two long bits of line there. And again, there's, there's my thing. I'm gonna twizzle, 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 twizzle. Now this needs to be, well, three or four inches long, sometimes longer, but three or four inches seems about right. Again, I'm just rotating one side, creating my twizzle, 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 twizzle. There we are. And pinch it again so the twizzle doesn't come undone. But there we are, we've got a twizzle boom with a loop at the end there as well, okay? And um, again, you could do a figure of eight. I'm gonna show you a, an easier loop. Again, I think this main line shouldn't break. So a figure of eight, yes, is the best knot, but there's nothing to stop you just going through two or three times, which is a strong knot anyway, but just perhaps 10% weaker. Oh, I'll actually do it in a sec. I'm trying to do it back to front here. Two. I'm not doing it right. Three. So I've gone through it three times. There we are. So I've just gone over it, a, 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 a triple overhand knot, shall we call it. Let's bring this up a little bit more, just by just prizing it up the line a little bit more. Moisten, pull tight. You've got quite a, a biggish knot there, there now. That should never break there. If you're using six pound, eight pound, 10 pound line, which most feeder anglers would be doing, that should never break there. Um, or a shock leader or something like that. So we're gonna trim that. Three or four mil. Again, you don't wanna trim it too tight. Move that tag end out of the way. So we've trimmed that and there we are. 
that's our twizzle boom. And we need something there now to stop the uh, feeder continuing down the line. And I uh, brought some yet. So some cube style shots are excellent for this. You could use beads and there are specific beads and things like that, but one or two number eights don't generally go smaller than an eight. I tend to use pliers. In fact, I always use pliers. You could buy them on if you so wish. I'm just gonna, just gonna press it on there. One number eight above the knot. And the cube style shot are excellent because they're flat sided. The swivel presses against it really, really nicely. If I just show you, there we are. So this, the feeder now runs all the way down to that, to that um, cube style shot, um, which is stopped by the knot. And that acts as a nice buffer. You could use a bead. There are hook length beads and knot beads that you can use, but the England feeder team don't mind using this arrangement. I've seen them using it. So if it's good enough for them, it's good enough for me. But yeah, sometimes some people put two eights there, but I think one's generally enough and it butts against that nicely. But what you'll find, I don't know if you can see that, but this, this, this flat side of the shot helps the hook length kick away as well. So this bit's kicking away there. I'll just show you. As soon as I put tension on it, it wants to kick away that way. And as you can see there, my hook length is going to attach here. That is longer than the length of the feeder. So this feeder, when it's doing all this business in the water and with a fish on and that, it's doubled up for starters for extra um, durability. But this feeder isn't going to damage your hook length. So that's what I do. And so I just tie my hook length loop to loop to that. Like I say, you could use a quick change hook length swivel or something like that, but I just prefer to loop to loop it. And it's one less component in your rig that can create tangles and stuff. So, uh, so there, that's my free running feeder, direct to the line, um, but by using a little twizzle boom at the end, just to push the hook length further away from the feeder. Great little way of fishing. Right then, pattern osters. Now, uh, a pattern oster is basically an extra length of line from your feeder to the main line that pushes it further away. Good for bream fishing and for creating a bit less resistance. You seem to get better bites fishing a pattern oster um, for species like skimmers and roach and that. And it's just a very, very popular way of fishing, um, of traditional feeder fishing for silverfish in particular. So um, you can get free running links like this. This is the, um, there's the matrix one there. This is one I've made myself as well. And you can vary this length. So it's just a boom, basically. You're pushing it away from the, from the main line and just helps magnify your bites and um, create a bit less resistance. So, so these, these, um, these are really, really good. And I'll just show you it on there so you can see. Hopefully you can see that. So that. And basically, you've just got an extra boom. That's all you've done. You've created a bit of distance from the feeder to the main line. And definitely, when you're fishing... Um, tight to the feeder. It just helps magnify the bites. Everything's happening here a bit more rather than much closer to the feeder. And um, if you was uh, sort of um, on an international match, feeder match or whatever, you have to use a sliding pattern oster anyway or sliding boom. Everything's got to be free running. Um, but in England, um, a lot of traditional waters, you can fish um, normal pattern osters or a fixed pattern oster. So I'm going to show you how to tie a fixed pattern oster. So we've got a nice long length of line here. Okay. What I want to do now is tie a really big loop. So I'm doubling it up. I have got a good foot there. It's a foot long loop there. Hope you, hopefully you can see that. Yeah. And I've just pinched it at this end. There's the rest of it there. But what you also want is a long tag here. You need a long tag before where you've pinched it, okay? So we've got a nice long tag and a nice big long loop, okay? And all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna double up the line, like so, and make a, double it over, like so, and then go through with the big loop three times. Use my mouth to grab it. 
Yeah. So we've gone through three times and we've created a, a triple overhand knot there. A triple overhand knot. Moisten, pull it tight. Okay. So what we've got now is one big loop there and we've got a very long tag there. Okay. And what I'm going to do now, this tag, it's important that it's this tag is what the feeder is going to tie to because it's pushing up, it's pushing that way towards the rod and reel. So it's, it's kicking away, it's less likely, because it's kicking upwards away from the hook length, which will be that way, it's less likely to tangle. So basically, you tie your feeder onto the end of that link um, or a snap link swivel, which is what I prefer. So let's pop the snap link swivel on. Again, a Palomar knot for me. Very hard to show a Palomar knot close up, but we'll try. So I've gone through with that big long tag end. Double itself over. Pop the, that bit through. And pop the swivel through that. Pull it all tight gather it all up, make sure it's all nice and neat. There we are, we've got a nice little Palomar knot up to a swivel. Again, let's trim it off. And there we have, there we have our Paternoster of whatever length you want. And our feeder will go on to the end of there. So let's pop a feeder on. Open end feeder on for this purpose. There we are. So that's our nice long paternoster there. Okay, move that out of the way. And what we've got at this end is a doubled up loop. All you have to do now, you could, you could basically, you could use this doubled up loop and tie a loop on the end there. But what I generally do, because it's normally very strong line, I often do this with a bit, bit of a shock leader material or something like that, or very heavy main line. You've got this big long doubled up bit here. I'm just going to trim it right up to the knot. Again, leave two or three mil. And we've cut the loop now. And then we've got twice as long a length of line there now. So that's twice as long a length. So there's our, there's our feeder. That's our paternoster there. There's our knot. It's kicking upwards away from the, away from the hook length. It's kicking that way away from the hook length. And this is going down to our hook length. And all I'm going to do there, at the end of this line, I'm going to tie a little loop, or a big loop, or have a big single overhand loop's fine. Pull it down, moisten. There we are, we've got a nice little loop for our hook length to go on. Just scratch myself. There, so there we are. That is our Paternoster rig. Very long Paternoster I've tied here, but you can shorten it. But that's our long Paternoster, a fixed Paternoster rig, and the hook length will go on the end there. It's good when you're using sort of long 50 centimeter plus hook lengths, particularly good for bream fishing. Nice fixed Paternoster, and our hook length goes there. But importantly, the Paternoster is shorter than this bit here. Again, this bit, this feeder, is only damaging this bit potentially and not the all important hook length. So that's our fixed paternoster. I'm gonna show you another version of that which is a sliding paternoster. Now then, this is our main line. I'm just gonna tie a loop at the end because our hook length's gonna to attach to that. Use my loop tire, round once, tie it down. Boom, nice and quick. So that's our loop. All right, so there's our loop, which is our hook length is gonna to attach to. Somewhere up here, I want to tie a sliding paternoster. And to do that, I've got another length of the same material. You can go thicker. I wouldn't go thinner, but I'd go thicker or the same material as your feeder line. Um, it needs to be stiff, basically. And basically, this is just a traditional um, slider knot, I think you'd call it, a slider knot. So, uh, so I've doubled up the length of line there. Well, sorry, I've got uh, a piece of line against my main line. What I'm going to do, I'm going to 
double it over like that. Hopefully you can see that. Yep. And I'm going to just pass that tag through four times. Four seems to be about right. Two, three, four. So I've passed it through four times. Move that out of the way. Distracting. Yeah, so I've passed that tag through four times. Moisten. And I've pulled, I'm going to pull it tight. So what you've got there is a short tag and a longer tag pushing away from the hook length importantly. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to trim the short tag. Now what I've got there is a slider knot, but that is also our paternoster. It's a sliding paternoster, and this can move up and down the line to wherever you want it. I can bring it right down to the hook length knot if I want. So it's there, but by it will slide up and down the line. Really good way of fishing a, an adjustable hook length, because all to make your hook length longer, you just move the paternoster further up the line. It's a lovely way of fishing. Um, a lovely way of um, making an adjustable rig. Um, but if you're using anything more than half an ounce an ounce, that will definitely slip on the cast. Um, the weight of whatever's on the end of your pattern oster will just pull it down to the loop. So you need to trap it with something. And again, I just use some cube style shot. Generally two, one if it's a light feeder is enough, but generally two. You can use beads and clasps and things, but generally just a couple of cube style shot is enough just to stop it where you want it um, on the cast. But the heavier the feeder, the more shot you need. But I don't use this adjustable sliding pattern oster for heavy feeders, basically. Um, there's, there's better setups than that. So that's, that, so that's it. And we'll just quickly um, whack a feeder on there or a bomb or something so you can tell what I'm on about. Let's use this. Um, I'll tell you what I will do actually, I'll show you another little trick. So that's what I use, a, 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 a swivel, a snap link swivel. But quite often, especially with this style of set, when I want ultimate sort of finesse and less, less bother, less things to tangle, I just chop off the swivel and I just use that part. So we've just got that part there, the snap link bit, not the swivel. And I often use that for my light setups because I just want a no-nonsense um, rig that's not going to tangle. I know swivels are supposed to stop tangling, but it's still another component that can get things wrapped around and a bit more unnecessary weight to the rig. So I'm just going to tie a little Palomar knot. I'm just going to tie that little clasp into the end of my sliding pattern oster. And I generally make, make these just three or four inches tops really. A bit of line to, for my wife to find on the floor. Um, so yeah, so that's our, uh, so that's our sliding pattern oster kicking away from the hook link. Let's pop a, let's just pop a bomb on, a heavy bomb, because <laughs> it's the only one I've got with me, just so you can see it. But yeah, sliding pattern off to there. So this goes, this will adjust. So you, all you've got to do is move the shot and the hook length. So move the shot first and then the pattern oster. So there we are. It's an adjustable sliding pattern oster, but really, really neat. I'll move the knot down right next to the shot. So yeah, but really, really neat and a nice finesse style setup. And it is free running, but it's sort of semi fixed. So there we are, so a nice sliding adjustable pattern oster. A great way, if you're fishing on a venue where you might be changing your hook length all the time, just to keep in touch, especially for finicky roach and, and, and deep water when you need a long tail, but then you think when the fish arrive, you might want a shorter tail. It's a great way of fishing an adjustable hook length because just by moving that pattern oster up and down the line, you create a longer or a shorter hook length. So I really like that setup. It's basically a slider knot, but that is also your pattern oster. Yeah, sliding pattern oster. Well, the final rig I want to show you is a helicopter rig. And if you're chucking a heavy feeder a long way, or if you're faced with a headwind, or you just want a no-nonsense rig that's not going to tangle, then a helicopter arrangement 
is best for you. Um, this is obviously for traditional feeder fishing, window feeders, cage feeders, block end feeders. A helicopter arrangement basically means the feeder propels forward whilst the hook length can spin around and out the way and not interfere with the feeder. It just helps to reduce tangles and it's a really, really effective way of fishing. Um, I use it a lot. It's particularly good for quality fish on the feeder and for chucking at range, but you can use it at any sort of distance really, but that's where I mostly tend to use it. So um, to create the arrangement, the, this is what I've got. You can get different sorts of beads. Um, you want the rubber float stops or rubber beads. They come in black or natural, so let's just use the natural ones. Um, there, they come on these little um, these little wires that allow you to transfer them onto the line. And then you need a snap link swivel to put your feeder on, and then you need a hook length swivel to put your hook length onto. Okay, this is the end of our main line, and the first thing that we need to put on is one of these bees. Now, if you have used these before, they are really tightens up, so sometimes it's hard to get your line through. Yeah, we've done it again. I'm getting good at this, aren't I? So I threaded that on, I threaded that through that fine wire eye, and we can just pull our first bead onto the line. So there we are. We've got a bead on the line there. Move that up out the way, and then we want our hook link swivel, or quick change hook link swivel or whatever you want to call them. Never know what to call these things. <laughs> Every company's got its own name. So we'll slide that on, and that will get stopped by that bead, okay? And then we just put on a second bead. Try and thread it through. There we are. Pull it on. All right, we don't need those anymore. And there we are. Our hook length will attach to that bead just by pulling down the collar. So you've got a little hook on the end, and then you pull that over once you've attached your hook length to that. Okay, now these can be tied together. I tend to have a little bit of a gap between them just so it's completely free running, a centimeter or so. But you can alter it. Some people move them several inches away, so there's a, a bit of play. But generally, if in doubt, just have them about a centimetre apart and you won't go far on. Okay, so that's, that's our hook length. Our hook length attaches basically above the feeder on the main line. So, and this is the end of our, our main line again. And all we're going to do is going to attach, let's close that, close that down so we don't get anything tangled. We're just going to attach that, thread it on the line. And again, once again, we're going to twizzle it. Twizzle, twizzle, twizzle. If you pull it down and then let it re-twizzle, you get a tighter twizzle again. Again, remember what I said before, you could put a weight on the end of the swivel and that helps you create a, um, a tighter swivel without this misbehaving. But for the purpose of this, I can do it perfectly well. Like that. And it only needs to be, for me generally, just, just just three or four inches, that's all you generally need. You could make it much longer, depends on your venue and the style of fishing you're doing. But yeah, so we've got a twizzled up bit of uh, line. I'm gonna go through three times. Um, as I've said before, um, a figure of eight is potentially stronger. Well, it is stronger, but I find just going through three times is still strong, it never breaks there. Never ever had a rig break there. So we've pulled it down nice and tight. We've got a little bit of a boom there. Let's trim that off. There we go. All right, and let's move these beads down so we can see the, the final setup, okay? So what we've got, we've got our snap link swivel, which our feeder will attach to. We've got a short twizzle boom of whatever length you want. Two to four inches is a, is a good benchmark, really. Then we've got a rubber bead, a hook link, quick change hook link swivel, and another rubber bead. So our hook length will come off here and our feeder will go onto there. Let's pop the feeder on just so you can see. Big play.
plane flying overhead. <laughs> Hopefully you can still hear me. So there we are. So we've gone direct to the feeder and our hook length comes off there. Let's pop a hook length on as well, just so you can see. A little short one here. Doesn't need to be long for this. I know the specialist anglers, they like a really short hook length and um, they catch a lot of big quality roach and things like that um, and tension that with short hook lengths. And a, and a feeder, they'll push it right up the line as well sometimes, right out the way. But generally for, for a match style, general course angler, um, bringing those two beads down. And uh, so you've got your paternoster here basically, or it's almost like a paternoster here. And then the hook length can spin can basically spin all the way around here, no problem whatsoever. And generally this, this would generally be 30 centimeters to a meter long. You know, it depends on the venue and the, and the time of day and what, how the fish are biting and everything. So that's our no nonsense helicopter arrangement, a fantastic way of fishing. If you were stuck and wasn't sure, if you were suffering with tangles, um, and you wasn't sure what to use for traditional feeder fishing, I would just go with this arrangement. It works on all sorts of venues and it is the least tangle prone of them all because the hook length can just rotate and the feeder is nice and robust and kicks away from the hook length. So there we are, lots and lots of feeder rigs, something to uh, get you thinking. And I'm sure you've all got your own little alternatives and a few little tweaks and things that help improve the setups. But hopefully that's helped demystify a few rigs for you and shown you um, a relatively simple way of tying them all. I'm sure there'll be loads of comments and opinions on which is right, which is wrong. Um, but I've just hopefully shown you in simple terms how to tie them all. It's up to you guys to go out there and use them to good effect. Well, thanks everyone for watching it to the end. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want even more content and what I do already do for free, then don't forget to check out my members area. It's only £2.99 a month and there's loads of extra tips and tricks and films and short films, long films, medium films, canals, lakes and rivers. There's all sorts on there. Something to whet everyone's appetite, I hope. So as long as you all keep enjoying what I'm doing, I'll continue to carry on making these nice films. Until next time, I'll see you again on the bank.